Okay. We're recording. All right, welcome everyone to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on June the 2nd, 2022, calling the meeting to order at 6.02 p.m. Um, pursuant to the direct or the decision of the town of Amherst, which is permitted by uh, the state, we are meeting remotely. Um, so I'm gonna call on people just so we all know that you can hear and be heard. All right, so I'll just go around the order I see in my screen. I'm Sarah Marshall. I'm here for the Recreation Commission. Sam McLeod? Here. Okay, you're at large, right? I'm at large, correct. <laughs> Dave Williams? Here, uh, representing Housing Authority. Thank you. Tim Neal? Uh, here, uh, at large. Great. Hetty Startup? I am here and I'm representing the MS Historical Commission. Thank you. Andrew McDougall. I here I'm representing the planning board. Sarah Isinger. I'm here. I'm an at-large member. This is my last meeting. Thank you. Unless we have to meet next week. Tell me you'd Unless meet. we have to meet <laughs> next week. Okay. <laughs> okay. <Sarah>. All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, Katie Allen Soba. Here, I'm an at-large member. Wonderful, thank you everyone. Yes, um, several of us will be leaving the committee at the end of this month. So, so I appreciate them, everyone um, making time to be here to reconsider uh, the, a revised track proposal. Before we launch into the agenda, we need somebody to take minutes. So somebody who will still be on the committee in the fall, I think would be, would be best. You know who you are, I think. Sam, thank you. Thanks so much. <clears throat> All right. Um, so on the agenda, we have, yes? One qu uh, Sonia, the recording for this will be accessible to members relatively soon because I'll need to rely on that for minutes. Um, yeah, we post them every Friday now, okay, but I'll, I'll get it out to you. No urgency, just thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Sarah. Great. And I see Kathy Shane, a town councilor, who is our uh, council liaison is also present. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, next in the agenda, financial updates, if there are any. All right, there is no financial updates at this point I'm at year end, so it's going to take a while to get to get there. Um, the only thing I can report, and I'm pretty sure I sent an email to everybody, is a large sum of money was returned from one of the projects from Amherst Community Connections, over two hundred thousand. So that'll be in the balance for next year. That's great, and we don't have to vote to reserve it or recommend that it be reserved. It's already no, we have a big enough reserve in that in there now, so. We can add it to next year if we don't spend it. But we don't we don't lose it. No, you we're, don't we're, lose it. Okay. And uh, the CPA coalition sent out another announcement about you know increases in state match, but we don't know yet what that will mean for Amherst. Is that true? That's true. I think we're being told to use around 30, 30 to thirty five percent for estimates next year, but that might change by the time we get there. We meet again. Right, or right. y'all meet again. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to move up. up I'm sorry, Andrew. Um, yeah, can I, I, I sorry, I had a quick question. So relative to that give back, I know the last time we met, we had kind of a, a, a budget in mind for the project for the year. Should we consider that money that's being given back as available for tonight's proposal if need be? Uh, no. 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 I believe this is gonna be a, a borrowing. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. But 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 it'll be in the pot for next from year. which debt payments are are made. Yeah. Right. So, it's, so it is kind of available just through a different mechanism. Right. right. It'll just it'll yeah. just fall to the regular fund balance and it'll be part of what we calculate next year. Thanks. You're right. welcome. Okay. Um, but and that reminds me, is it the case that um, all the approved projects will be getting requests for updates. Um, I forget if we do it in June or in the fall, you know, sh tell us how much you've spent and what's left and remember that annual reporting. 
Yeah, that usually comes just be right at the very beginning of our meetings. I gather that information and send it out. Yeah, I think last also, year we we created an online um, form. form format that we will send out um, probably in late July, early August, would be my oh, guess, nice. let, to let them wrap up the fiscal year. Um, and then I think we'll report on those at the beginning of our the first meeting in the fall, um, like Sonia said. Okay, great. I just, I didn't remember when that happened. Okay, well, I, then I would like to um, take public comment if there is anyone I cannot see who might be, or maybe I can, I don't know, who might be attending, who might wish to speak. So there's two attendees, and if either of them uh, want to speak, just raise your hand and I'll bring you in. And uh, neither are raising their hand at this time. Okay. We did, however, uh, get this afternoon um, one written public comment. I hope everyone had a chance to read it. And if not, maybe we can put it up on the screen at the appropriate time because it was about the track proposal. Okay. All right, then let's move into the track proposal. I will just say for anyone watching or refresh our own memory that we uh, <clears throat> took up this proposal in last, last November, I think, early November. <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of questions about its consistency with the, the master plan that had been done for the recreational fields. <clears throat> and we so we declined to take any action at that time because Doug Slaughter on behalf of the uh, regional schools said that they would get more information and resubmit. So he has done that, they've done that, and here we are. So thank you, Doug. Maybe you can bring us up to date on what you've learned. What yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. And, and if, if it would be all right, I, I, I have a little slide deck that I, I like to share. It'll help guide me through the, the conversation. So I'm going to attempt to share my screen and see if that uh, behaves itself. Um, let's go. If it doesn't let you, Doug, just let me know. I'll make you a co-host. I think it's going to. Let me see. If good. Yeah, you're good. And what I'm not sure of is whether or not it will, if I actually go into slide deck mode, it'll, you know, pres presentation mode, it'll, it'll work or not. But we'll see. Um, uh, where's the one? Let me present. Let's see how often I do this. There we go. That's from the beginning. Ah, uh, perfect. That's what I wanted to say. So, uh, you know, there's a few things that have changed since we last spoke. Um, you know, the the overall you know sort of concept of of what we're trying to do is is really in place uh, and hasn't changed really materially since then. Uh, but we've gotten a little better about some aspects of of uh, how we are are hoping to uh, to finance this. And so, I'll just I'll take you through a little bit of it. I'll do a quick review on the on the project itself. So, there's really sort of two two avenues that we, we've looked at, and part of this is just by virtue of, of you know, trying to hit timing cycles for um, action by, by both the regional school committee and the town meetings and the town council, as well as uh, you know, to, to get the project moving forward because the, the need at the track is really rather uh, significant. Um, you know, it's, it, we, haven't had a home, we haven't hosted a home meet since uh, I think 2018, and so it's really in, in, in bad shape. And so there's really sort of two options that are under consideration. Uh, one is, is basically uh, shown here, which is to, to replace the track uh, in its current location and, and just resurface it and some amenity work around it. Doug, uh, we're, only just, uh, we're only seeing the title page. I don't know oh, if I'm you, uh, yeah, it's not switching with them. Um... Okay. It might be on your other screen too. I don't know if you've got it on two screens, if you've got the dual monitors going, but it might be, you might be sharing the other screen. Right. Possibly just clicking on slide number two might display it for us. Yeah, he's, he's not on slideshow yet. There we yeah. go. Right. Let me try stopping the share and then resharing. Um, and see if I can get it to come up. For what it's worth, I could see it just fine, not in presentation mode. Right. Well, that may be the. Uh, 
this. Are you able to see me changing slides at this point? No, it's still just showing the, the regular. Huh. Um, I think you're fine just to click through the slides, Doug. It's large enough, I think, for everybody to see, if you wanted just to click on the slides. OK. Um, so are, are you currently seeing the, the slide title um, option one? Yep. Mm -hmm. OK. So uh, again, just to sort of re reiterate, this is, this is where the track exists currently. The option one, which is um, really just about getting the track repaired and, and some amenity work around ADA compliance and that sort of thing. Uh, is is um, sort of one option that that we we are exploring. The other option, uh, which is interestingly titled, uh, oh, shoot, did that change for you guys or no? Yes. Okay. So the other option, it says option two and three, partly because two and three were were a difference of, of field material in interior to the track, um, but really option three is the one that's that's. Uh, the the larger price uh, option, but a preferable solution that fits more with the master planning that we did a few years ago relative to to playing fields and and recreation spaces in the downtown. Um, I will point out you probably can't see us on the slide very well, but but on the left lower left corner it says it shows a sort of softball field, baseball field, softball field is what it is. The key word there is its future. That's not part of of the price that we're talking about today that just gives an indication of, of that ongoing and, and future planning that we'd like to do there will be there will would be some uh some dirt work and some preparatory work in that area uh which would make it a, a usable space but it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a formally uh, uh a softball field just yet that's a that's a next phase kind of project we'd like to do uh but nonetheless you get a sense from this uh from this slide a little bit of what the the reoriented track would look like there's you know the, the ADA uh, access to the location is, is decidedly much much better um, we go with a, uh, uh, an artificial surface interior to get the most playing time the, the, the amount of playing time uh, on, a, on an artificial surface uh, is is much much higher over the total life of the of the of the of that type of surface the total cost is is comparable if not less expensive when you talk about uh, amount of playing time you get um, but it does have most of that cost on the upfront side. It does have maintenance costs year over year, um, but those are fairly modest relative to like a grass interior field. Um, and so this is this is really this this option three is, is is actually preferred by the school committee. But the price tag is pretty pretty steep. It's about four point seven million dollars. And and we when we last spoke, I don't think we had a as precise a number. It's a little better now, of course. You know, inflation being what it is, that that number's. Uh, probably still fluid in some ways, but but when in working with uh, the folks that had helped us with the master planning process, uh, Weston Sampson, uh, they gave us some refined numbers with a more focused uh, project scope, and and so we were able to to kind of uh, have this target of about 4.7 million as a, as a total cost of of project, um, and so you know what we opted to do it with this by virtue of the, the need of, of definitely taking some action relative to the track is to uh, is to ask you know the, the school committee to take some action and and what that involved was uh, they voted to authorize debt which means uh, you know we can it, that the regional school district would take on this debt and we would assess the four member towns according to our our uh, what's called our regional agreement method for, for capital um, to, uh, to pay that back. And when we asked the four towns uh, about whether or not they could take on, you know, the entirety of the project, they, every town said, no, that's, that's too, big a, too big a ask to do in one fell swoop that way. And so we, we knew that that would probably be the answer, but we, we formally asked the question and they, they all clearly said, we can't do it through that mechanism of just the usual capital debt assessment of the, of the regional schools. So what the school committee did was vote an authorization of 1.5 million uh, and that will effectively would would be able to to uh, accomplish the option one. Uh, that's roughly what it would take to resurface that track in its current location, make the ADA compliance and that sort of thing. However, you know, everyone's aspiring to a, a much better and more uh, uh, 
well suited and, and higher performing uh, space and, and, and project. And so uh, what that did was say, you know, what, what that allowed for was a starting point for some funding, but then uh, recognizing that, that we may want to take on this other project. And so the authorization itself had this rather lengthy structure to it uh, that allowed for a, uh, the reorientated track uh, as, as an option. So when, when you go to borrow money from, you know, uh, as a regional school district, it's very, you have to articulate specifically the project uh, in order to get um, to do the authorization, but then also to actually borrow the money to do the project. And so what we did with the authorization was we had a, uh, a, a second option available. And so it has this contingency language in there. Um, and what the school committee voted was that if uh, and the contingency was if an additional $2.2 million worth of funds could be raised uh, through various other means, and that was left, you know, to be figured out, uh, and that can be identified and, and, and uh, secured by January of 2023, then they would be comfortable moving ahead with, with the larger option three project. And so that, that sort of sets the frame of, of the ability to do either of the objects, but it also gives the opportunity to, uh, Make a commitment to to doing something with the with the regional schools taking on that debt of a, a million and a half dollars, and then uh, provide some clear direction to uh, to us as far as other uh, amounts of money and 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 potential uh, sources uh, that can be secured or or might possibly be secured. So it gave some some, uh, and I think for fundraising purposes. So one one aspect that's been discussed at, at length is 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 uh, private fundraising. And, and uh, I think the, the letter that, that you received today with, uh, with some support from the, the Hurricane Boosters uh, Club is, is trying to do that and has started that fundraising. And by having the commitment of, of the regional schools to say, hey, we've got a, a piece of the funding in place. Now we can you know, more actively do uh, some fundraising. And then these efforts by reaching out to, to you guys and the CPA and, and the other three uh, uh, communities for other other sources of funds, uh, we can potentially get enough uh, of the project uh, funded in, in, in order to do the larger project, which is what we'd like to do. But I think the key thing to keep here is regional school district, you know, authorized and the four towns uh, voted to, uh, to allow the, the authorization of debt for a million and a half. So all, the, all four communities were, were willing to allow the school district to take on that debt and, and start this project uh, in some form. I think uh, I, I don't know that I've met anyone or spoken to anyone, whether it be in Amherst or otherwise, that that uh, doesn't like the the larger project as as the the end goal. I think the hard part for any community is is you know can we can we get the funding secured? And so, uh, you know, in in cooperation with with uh, Sean, um, we talked about some different ways to potentially fund this, and 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 so. This is uh, a, a proposal you know, we kind of put together uh, this spring to talk about other ways to fund it and, and how else to uh, uh, apportion those costs. And so at the top there, you have the debt authorization. That's the part I just went on about. Um, and so we use what's called a regional agreement method, which is, uses uh, equalized values, uh, equalized property values. The new numbers for 2022, they do it every other year. Um, and so those numbers literally came out like yesterday. Uh, and I happened to look them up and, and found them. So, so when we get into some of the detail of, of this, uh, how that one and a half million dollars is apportioned to each of the four communities is a little different because the percentages that each town uh, owns is their share of that regional agreement shifted a little bit. Um, but we would we'd use that regional agreement method uh, to, to apportion those costs. That's a standard thing that we have in our, in our regional agreement. Um, we talked about, uh, and so other, mechanisms for funding this would be CPA. And so we set a target of about 1.2 overall. Uh, you know, each of the four communities has CPA funds available. Um, and we thought, well, how about we do a million two in, in, in CPA funds as a, as a target. We'll use that regional agreement to sort of slice it to each of the different towns uh, and see if they have that capacity or that willingness uh, to use their CPA funds in that way. I will say this, and, and just because I'm thinking of it as a reminder is that, um, while a large part of this project would be eligible for CPA funds, not all of it, um, an artificial surface field interior would not be uh, would not be an eligible cost. Um, 
but that cost of that field is is roughly one and a half million dollars. So it it sort of fits nicely with what we've already uh, got in in hand relative to the debt authorization. But but that is one of those things that CPA funds are used, whether it be by Amherst or or the other three communities. Uh, we would have to keep an eye on on making sure it gets uh, expended for eligible uh, expenses. But a fair amount of the project is eligible for for CPA funds. Um, so the uh, the sort of uh, next area of potential funding from the four communities would be uh, grants and other. We talked about uh, you know one of the sources that that sort of came to mind is ARPA funds. Uh, Amherst being a sort of regional resource has a has a higher level of funding uh, than the other three communities uh, as far as the ARPA funds are concerned, and so. Uh, that target of, of uh, using ARPA funds, which are grants or other other uh, funds from the town, whether it be reserves or or you know uh, their own capital uh, process or you know cash capital processes or or whatever, um, we we based it on the on the sort of proportion each town has of ARPA funds, and so in that circumstance, uh, Amherst has a little higher percentage than than uh, is the case with the uh, regional agreement method, but but again it's. We are creating a regional resource here with this, and so that's part of the rationale for for using that to, to sort of divvy up that cost. Um, but again, about a million dollars is the the target there. And then you know it's it's been uh, discussed in, in chatting with with our our friends and colleagues at the at the boosters that they think a million dollars is a target that they can they can get to. Hopefully, they can raise more than that. Uh, and so we would essentially, in sort of thinking about how to apportion that, we would use that regional agreement method. It's not that it really be apportioned to each town. You know, it, it just sort of serves that purpose of of holding a piece of of each of the four communities, uh, you know, sort of donation uh, progress towards this. But but the idea being that that we can use these different sources of funds to to try to achieve uh, the the full funding of the project. I think the key thing to keep in mind is the combination of CPA funds and and grants and other, which would be reserves, cash capital, any of those mechanisms that a town may have, um, are entirely up to each community as to how they choose to do it. Um, one of the four towns, I can't remember, it's Lever, it shoots Bay, only has, a, I think shoots Bay may have, instead of the 3% CPA uh, uh, value, they only have it at one and a half percent. So their, their resource for CPA funds may be a lot less. Um, you know, there are some uh, some other projects in their queue in some some towns uh, for, for utilization of their of their CPA funds. Likewise, their, their, their utilization of their ARPA funds are also, uh, Potentially, you know, identified already or 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 in use, and so I think it's going to be for each community a unique conversation about how to try to hit those targets with us. And, and my conversations in the ensuing few few weeks and months uh, are going to be, you know, this one being the first one, you know, to to reach out to each of the four member towns and see, you know, what and how they might support this project and and uh, what resources they have available and how they might. Uh, be able to meet their targets. So these are not rigid in any way, and and you know whether CPA uh, is or is not the way Amherst wants to support, you know the project or how much they want to support the project uh, is entirely up to you and and obviously decisions of the council. Um, but you know this was a frame of of reference for for uh, trying to 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 use different sources to to try to uh, raise the funds to to utilize this or to create this this really. Um, significant you know uh, asset and resource for for the community of Amherst but also the the regional school students and 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 the region because uh, you know a lot of people use these these spaces and a lot of them are, are younger kids from those those three other communities and and so uh, you know it's 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 I think reasonable for each of the communities to kind of chip in and help out in in, in helping fund this in this project uh, can I add something real quick yes please um, just for the um... Uh, just so everyone is aware. So this project cost you see there, uh, if you go back to that other slide for one second. Right. Um, so the 4.7 million, that gets um, the region a six lane track. Um, there, I, I know there's interest in going to an eight lane track, I think for um, competition reasons and, and other reasons, if you have an eight lane track, I think it allows you to do more. Um, we did get an updated cost estimate for what it would take to get to an eight lane track and it would be about $150,000 more than what you see there. Um, so that would have to come out of one of these other funding sources. I think, you know, we'd hope it would come out of the, if, if we can fundraise more, you know, that's sort of a tangible thing to fundraise for us to get to that eight lane track. Um, but just so everyone's aware, this gets us six lanes um, as a town. If if we wanna go for the eight lane, it would be a little bit more. Yeah, and I think, I, you know, I think that to that point, I mean, that's a that's a detail. And, and I think there are other details as we go through the, 
the actual design phase if we get to that place. I mean, I think we this gives us the right order of magnitude and and you know the right neighborhood of, of price range of the 4.7. Um, but it's you know we'll we'll have some decisions we're gonna have to make relative to what to include or not include. And and if we can include something like two more lanes, that can that can be really a valuable thing to this resource uh, from the standpoint of of some of the economic potential of a resource like that to be able to host certain uh, kinds of events and 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 be able to generate revenue that way is a is a real positive. Uh, but you know it comes with a price tag, and so we have to you know sort of trade those off against each other and and see. Uh, what each community is, is willing to, to do and, and how much they want to support those kinds of things. Um, and just sort of look more specifically at each of the four communities and, and sort of what those, what those costs are. Um, and if you've been watching this around over the last few months, uh, you know, the, the local taxation piece, of course, you know, anything that's borrowed will have interest and charge on top of that. Um, that local taxation is, is, uh, is you know, a million and a half dollars split out uh, using the regional agreement method. And again, this is utilizing, it's the first time it's been publicly seen, the, the new EQV values because uh, we, we use the, the EQV values that are in place at the time we borrow, which you now that new numbers have come out, uh, you know, we would potentially do some borrowing, of, you know, basically uh, early in the in next calendar year. And so that would change the numbers a little bit. And so that shifted things a little bit. Uh, Amherst number went down just a little bit from what had maybe previously been seen by you folks if you've been watching this closely. Not a huge amount, but some. Um, Leverett was the one that took the, the biggest hit as far as an increase. I think there's one up about 20 grand, um, but it also impacts the other ones. Uh, the thing I will say, uh, previously, uh, there was some design work. We'd come to you uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, just before the pandemic hit, uh, and you were generous and enough to, to support some, some funding for uh, some design work uh, relative to the, to the option three type project. Um, so you, you've actually sort of committed some resources about $157,000. Uh, the town of Pelham also did that. Uh, Leverett and Shootsbury, we had gone to them at the same time and asked, and then, uh, you know, the pandemic hit, we said, hey, just hold off. They held off, and so they didn't actually uh, vote to, 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 to uh, uh, fund in any way at this point, so they've not funded anything from their CPA. So in, in hand, you know, uh, you, we already have, you know, the sort of target for, for uh, CPA funds for Amherst is you know, a little over nine hundred and forty thousand dollars. We've already put one hundred and fifty-seven five into the into the uh, into the uh, into the pot, as it were. And so, what left is, is about seven hundred eighty-three, seven hundred eighty-four thousand, uh, in a you know sort of purely defined way. The request that we came to you with uh, earlier in the year uh, was about eight hundred thousand. Um, so it, it, by coincidence, really, basically, is the same number. Uh, so that's not a change, but I, I think the real key thing to take away here is is the ask of CPA from the town of Amherst at this point is is sort of in keeping with what we've asked to date. Um, the school committee is is very strongly in favor of of that option three. They think that's the smart uh, choice, um, but they also recognize the need for for some action relative to this track. And so um, we're hopeful to to have your support in in getting some more funding secured for this project and and. Uh, That'll send a good message out to to uh, the other communities as well as the, the people doing fundraising that that uh, town of Amherst is committed and and uh, wanting to see this project move ahead and 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 move ahead with that more uh, uh, significant changes to to the uh, existing circumstances. So I think that's sort of the update of where we're at. I'm happy to take any questions anyone has. And... Thank you, Doug. <clears throat> yes. So please. Um... Committee members, please throw up the yellow hand if you have a question. So I think Tim was first, but in any case, I'll call on him first. Oh, all right. <laughs> uh, okay, my sound is still on. Great. Yeah. Doug, do you have the cost breakdown of the 4.7? Those slides were the request for funding for the 4.7, but what's the cost breakdown of the project? Um, I do. Uh, I didn't share that with you, <laughs> but I certainly can. I, I, I meant to actually, I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, I can share the, the memo that was created uh, in early February that it doesn't have the, the more recent number that Sean just spoke about, about eight lanes versus six, but I, I'm happy to share that with the, with the committee. Um, school committee had it um, right around Valentine's Day um, at, in their packet of materials, but I'm certainly happy to share that with you guys. And it, it has the breakdown, roughly the, the, you know, there's uh, 
it's broken out by you know some of the amenities, the dirt, earthwork, uh, you know, the field itself, uh, the track, you know, sort of setup and 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 construction. So it, it it's it, it has some some detail to it. Uh, not it's by no means a you know a biddable sort of uh, level of detail, but nonetheless it 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 sort of articulates the the kind of uh, costs that are coming with with the various aspects of of the of the project. So I'm happy to share that with everyone. I say if anyone can lay hands on that tonight, <laughs> it would be really good to see that yeah, one page or, or whatever it is. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll, I'll email it to Sean and, and, and Sonia basically when I hang up with you guys. Okay, right, thank you. Um, Sarah. Yeah, Doug, thanks for the presentation. I had a question about the other towns. Maybe you said this, so forgive me, but the other towns and the CPA, it sounds like the, and the grants, those were both targets, but do we know the timing or the interest of those CPA committees in receiving this request? And are they, are those towns meeting simultaneously? Do you know? So the, the CPA process for the other towns, I, I did speak briefly with the, with the, uh, just to update the Pelham uh, Community Preservation Committee a little bit about this uh, a few weeks ago. Typically, their cycles are or like, are like yours. They they sort of uh, uh, take on and review projects in the sort of uh, late fall, early winter. Uh, review them and then and then offer uh, uh, recommendations for their town meetings, which happen in the spring. Um, however, uh, you know they they certainly can and and potentially would. Uh, entertain, you know, if they if they if they were having a fall town meeting, they could take something off cycle if they chose to and and had resources. So um, I know that uh, at least one of the communities is definitely uh, looking at a fall town meeting. So that would be again an opportunity for us uh, to to uh, get them to commit in in more than just CPA, potentially other ways um, uh, to to help support this project. And that would be helpful as far as just kind of putting formal uh, agreements in place uh, for financing. Um, but yeah, they typically, their CPAs in particular are, are on a similar schedule to you guys. Uh, it would it would probably be something we'd have to take off cycle, but it, it could also be a circumstance where they might, as a, as a community preservation committee, take uh, and make recommendations, uh, you know, in advance of, uh, you know, uh, their typical schedule uh, and then the action by town meeting would be in the spring, but but we'll we'll have to work on, uh, you know, sort of how uh, firm that would be, and and whether that's enough of a commitment, you know, for the for the school committee in order for them to 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 move the project forward. Um, and I think the other funds, you know, ARPA funds are ones that, you know, are are, I think technically under the select board control in those towns. Uh, so they the select board I think can can authorize payment. They typically like to run those things through their town meetings uh, and, and have varying processes. I've, I've connected with, with uh, one or two of the towns on that topic a little bit. Some have committed their, their ARPA funds to something entirely and, and so they don't have ARPA funds. So they're, they're looking at uh, you know, use of reserves or something else would be their sources for, for funding. And again, if they had a full town meeting, they, they could actually take action and appropriate at that time. It may be something where, where we seek uh, some some uh, recommendation re recommendations and and uh, uh, requests from their select boards and finance committees uh, in in advance of them formally making an appropriation at a town meeting next spring. I can follow up on that. It's unclear to me <clears throat> the significance of this January sixteenth deadline. Does the regional school's authorization evaporate if all these pieces are not lined up? Or, or it doesn't, but at January 16th, either we have all the commit or they have all the commitments, which would require fall town meetings, or they don't. And if they don't, then we default to option one. And option one doesn't require any CPA funds. Is that, am I also correct? That if, that if you're asking, um, if the school <clears throat> region is asking Amherst for, I think still 800,000, but I, it's unclear to me if that's the amount you're requesting. Um, that is specifically for option three. And if 
that cannot be done, then the grant does not happen. So I guess that's two questions. Um, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll take the uh, I'll take them in order. Um, so the the uh, the school committee will have to make a decision by January sixteenth, um, which is probably their first meeting in the new year. Um, in order to, and they, they, we originally said December 31st, and they were like, oh, a lot of people do donations late in the year, and so why don't we move it to the beginning of January, and, and it won't materially make a difference. But they will have to make a decision about which one they're going to pursue. If they feel, uh, and, and so the, the, there was a level of funding needed, $2.2 million. That's not the entirety of, of what's necessary to, to do the project. That gets us a good part of the way to 4.7, but it leaves us about a million dollars short of the, of the total cost. So, so needless to say, the school committee is, is going to exercise uh, some judgment about whether uh, they have the, the funding uh, at a sufficient level of security to, to move ahead by that date. So they'll, they'll make a choice, either option one or option three, come January, they're going to have to. Um, and so uh, that being said, you know, the other uh, piece of the puzzle here is that, you know, the independent of, of what we wish for, uh, if we don't have the resources, we can't borrow the money or we can't uh, uh, take action. So you can't, you know, you can't do anything without uh, uh, the sufficient resources to, 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 uh, to complete the project. And so if, if there aren't, uh, you know, the, when we go to actually, you know, borrow the money and secure the work with, with folks, uh, if, if, the, if the actual resources aren't appropriated at that point, we can't take the action. If we feel they're going to be, um, you know, that type of thing, then, then you know, we, we will be um, in anticipation of, of those things. Um, if, however, it doesn't materialize. We raised, you know, the fundraising's there, CPA, you guys vote for it. I think it, it's entirely reasonable and appropriate to put contingency uh, language into that vote. Um, that if if uh, if if the other uh, if the option three is not being explored, then that it wouldn't be uh, an actual award from CPA. I think that's perfectly fine and appropriate. The the authorization we currently have in hand for op, you know is enough to cover option one, uh, and so uh, you know the the request of CPA funds uh, you know would be basically return to you if, if we didn't pursue that. I think putting contingency language in would be good. Um, and yes, the, the, the actual ask is for 800,000, um, which would be in conjunction with the previous appropriation that you guys made to, to kind of complete the, the piece that we were uh, targeting for CPA from Amherst. Thank you. Uh, Katie. Thank you. Um, thanks, Doug, for this. I really appreciate all the detail. Um, I did have a question about, and you, if you cover this again, my apologies, but um, it's, I'm seeing, you know, 2 million for grants and donations, but the 2.2 .2 is what you're saying has to be raised by the January 16th. Right. And so th what the other 200,000 is. So it's, you know the 2.2 .2 million is any sources so it's uh excluding the you know the death authorization is it's independent of that 2.2 .2. so the one and a half for for uh uh of the debt authorization leaves another 3.5 that that or, i'm sorry 3.2 that needs to be raised the target the that the school committee felt was a comfortable enough level to to fill okay. it ahead was 2.2 .2 from whatever source so from any source got it okay i would yeah, yeah. If they get 2.2 in donate, you know, million in donations, then you know they'll feel comfortable that we can potentially get others from. It didn't others. matter what source. Yeah. But it's just the timing that you were describing. Got it. Right. Right. Thank you. Dan. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks, Doug, for the presentation and the uh, charts. They're they're quite helpful to understand the general discussion. Um, I have a few questions. One is a, a follow-up to Tim's question. Uh, and the question is, what's, what was the source of the cost estimates? Uh, a year ago, it was comparing what Frontier Regional had done to come up with a, you know, a guess, a, a well thought out guess for what a replacement 
over the existing track. Is this one based on Wesley and Sampson's estimates? It is. Weston and Sampson, we re-engaged with them and, and asked them to do some, some, uh, some refinement of what uh, they had originally produced back, uh, I want to say 2016 or 17, I think it was. Dave Zomek can maybe correct me on that. But Weston and Sampson did the original master planning and had set a very, very broad range of numbers relative to that. We went back to them and asked them to do some additional uh, work and with a little more detail um, uh, to get us a little more refined set of numbers. So, so that's... And when I share the, the memo with you um, that, that they prepared for us, uh, you know, you'll see a little more of that detail and you'll see how they, how they constructed that, that, uh, that estimate. Okay. Sam, they, they did this right after Doug came and presented the first time to CPA. So they're, you know, they're very up to date. Very good. Uh, thanks. And also, um, I got two other uh, questions based on the comments. You mentioned that they must, the RSC, the Regional School Committee, must decide by January 16th. Um, what's, I'm curious why that's such a, a date of definition. So there's a couple of pieces. One is that in order to, you know, the, the, uh, the debt authorization um, needed to have some parameters and, and there's a couple of rationales for that. One is, is so that the timing of the project, in other words, to move ahead in a timely way, uh, it was necessary. It also puts formal language in that, that when we go to the state and, uh, and submit paperwork to borrow money, uh, it, it's defined in a way that, that is clear and, and not open-ended. And, and so that's a, a helpful aspect and a, and a kind of a requirement of the Department of Revenue to, to do that. Uh, I think the third, you know, idea uh, is that by setting a date like that, it sort of, uh, you know, like I said, a lot of, you know, for, for fundraising, it sort of sets uh, the frame. Uh, in particular, you know, they've moved it into January from the end of December, just because a lot of people do some into your gift giving and, and for the tax purposes and whatever. Uh, so it gave them a little more time to, you know, for the for the people doing fundraising to kind of, uh, you know, potentially get that last little blush from the end of December. Um, but I think that you know there's some some requirements for the borrowing that it that it required something some language of that sort. I think also setting that frame and setting a a a, a clear target date uh, is is helpful in in uh, activating you know the the fundraising as well as the action by the various uh, communities as far as decision making. Okay, it focuses and, people's minds. Yes, and, quite a and bit. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. And I got one more, then I'll defer to others. But um, since I have the floor, I'll continue. Um, <clears throat> from what I heard, you're referencing that other towns uh, and what the presentation indicates are be, going to be asked to contribute some funds, but they also have time frames, which is the fall and maybe not authorization to the spring. Uh, obviously, the sooner they can be uh, moved to move one direction or another, the better. Uh, but that's a precursor to my question is, what's your confidence, uh, what level of confidence do you have in some of these other sources of funds? Uh, there's two categories. Sarah E. had inquired about this sort of as the first question, but the, uh, the grants that are potentially coming from other towns, uh, as well as Amherst, I believe, uh, and the fundraising. I'm curious because there's a large magnitude there and a short time frame. Um, and the ask currently of CPA is about 800,000. Uh, you know, it's certainly a wonderful project from my perspective, having attended all of the uh, sessions that Dave uh, had led in the original planning. And I recognize the value to the generation long term of actually being able to accomplish things. But in that light, having, uh, you know, concerns over being able to accomplish it. Uh, one factor is what do you what, you know, what's your guess on the likelihood of these other sources of funds? Maybe that's not in your purview. But uh, it's a factor as someone on the CPA would consider in terms of what might be the appropriate authorization level. Yeah, I think the it, it's, um... And I'll, I'll give my opinion about this, uh, you know, in, in looking at and talking with those other, the other communities about their resources. So, you know, they're, you know, all like Amherst, you know, they have uh, reserve funds that are available for use. Um, we, uh, 
uh, by virtue of, of uh, you know, some portion of support from the federal government, that sort of thing, uh, and some lower costs. Last fiscal year for the regional schools, um, we came in significantly under budget. And as a result, we had uh, less need. Uh, well, we had, there's a limit on how much reserves the school district can carry. And so if we have more than that limit, we are, we're compelled to give that back to the communities. Uh, and so we did that this spring. And so there's a resource right there uh, for each of the communities. It's, it's not you know, huge, huge numbers, but at the same time, it's, it's uh, in a way sort of found money. They were expecting to spend it on education. So you know, I, I think that, that it's logical to me that that uh, sort, of, uh, you know, sort of found resource could be something they could apply toward uh, this type of capital project because it's still spending on the schools that they were planning on spending uh, that, that has kind of come back to them. So I think uh, you know, there's a few different you know, options at each of the communities. I have a sense that they, uh, you know, that, that a fair amount, if not all of what we've got sort of articulated there is, is available to them. Uh, it's a question of, of, are they comfortable enough with this project as a, as a choice of how they want to spend their money? And I think, I think we can convince them that that's a, that's a good direction for them to go and that it's a resource that, that has value to their community as well as the regional schools. And so I think, uh, I'd say that the resources exist. It's a it's a question of you know the committees and communities. Yeah. And, yeah, Any word perfect. from the fundraising group? The... I haven't spoken to them recently. I don't know if if, uh, if Sean or, or Dave. So well, we just we just got an email from them uh, before this meeting, right? I think that was the email that was sent out to the committee um, expressing support and you know sort of their intention. So um, I think I think that I'll oh, go ahead, Sean. I was just going to say, Sarah, um, Kathy found the um the cost estimate sheet so i have it if it's if you want me to bring it up now or wait till after her hands go down i can bring it up after um why don't you bring it up now okay and while you're doing that um oh about the fundraising <clears throat> I, I i'm not sure why i think this maybe i'm imagining maybe i heard it that they may be waiting in part for us to move i mean because this is a CPA money from Amherst would be a big piece of it. And um, I don't know, it would be much harder to raise money if we weren't even going to contribute. Yeah. You know? I, mean, so, I think that's the, the conundrum I've been in for a while now is the sort of yeah. chicken and egg circumstance. Right. Like, first? <laughs> yeah, the fundraisers could raise funds, then we could, you know, convince the towns that they should invest in this way and vice versa. So uh, I think the, the initial commitment of the one and a half million to, to, to you know, debt authorization and approval by four towns is, is a significant step to say, this is a project that's really got some legs and it's gonna, it's gonna move in some way. And that, you know, it's, it's now, uh, you know, in everyone's best interest if they like the larger project to, to start preparing and committing to, to the other funds. So Dave, can you, uh, Dave, Doug, um, can you just, or somebody walk us through this? Or just... Do you want me just to go through it real quick, yeah, Doug? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, I mean, so Doug and I aren't the, you know, the engineers to put this together, but mm -hmm. it's, I can just quickly go through the categories. So you've got site preparation and demolition, um, and you can see the different, is this large enough for everybody to see on your screen? Okay. Um, you can see what they've uh, considered there. You have earthwork. Site, so this is all for option three as well. Um, site improvements. So this would be things like fences and gates to get in. Um, you can see Doug was talking about that the turf field was roughly the one and a half million. And so this is that portion that would be specifically the turf field. Uh, we have the running track. Um, Excuse me a moment. Dave Williams, can you mute? Yes, I can. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, we're getting um, some background noise. Thank you. So you've got the running track portion, um, electrical and lighting, because I believe this would put some new lighting up, right, Doug? Over the yeah. Um, so that comes up with a total estimated program cost of three point five uh, mobilization overhead and profits. So that would be you know what goes to the general contractor who takes this on um, is a twelve percent estimate. There's a ten percent contingency in this in the construction numbers. Um, to get to 4.2 and then to get to the rest of the way to the 4.7, there's a 12% design fee um, estimate, which would still have to be negotiated. But um, so 4.2 times uh, with 12% added on, it gets you to that 4.7. 
any questions on the the um, cost estimates while they're up? These are recent numbers. I mean, because inflation has been. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so it, it, I, will, it, I will say you can never account for the inflation that we've had recently. So, so we think they, you know, they we hope that they include sufficient uh, inflation, you know, inflationary contingencies. But um, as we've seen recently, it's just it continues to go beyond expectations. Does anyone? So I see several hands up. Uh, um, if hopefully that's specific to this uh, cost estimate that we're looking at. If not, please put your hand down, and we'll just come back. Okay, um, Andrew. Yeah, I just, I wanted, so I thought I'd heard something different that this would not include the lighting. So this is this is fully operational lighting. Um, we can run events in the evening with this 4.7. I believe that is the case. Let me just see if this okay. shows it. Um, Doug, is that a, your understanding this includes new um, track lighting as well? Yes, yeah. So it's, it, you know, it's, it's lighting, you know, so we'll, we'll will repurpose existing lighting or, or add new as needed to, to sort of uh, to make sure the field's available for, for day and night use. Um, I think the one big thing and, and you know, we did not include at this point uh, a significant input for, for uh, seating. And, you know, it, it's kind of by design that we did that. We've got some seating we can bring in. I think that, that that's a, a, you know, a sort of future fundraising or, or uh, you know, sort of potential later project that we might take on. Uh, you know, more importantly, is to get the, the project, uh, the facility itself, in, in good working order and and uh, available for us to use. And, and the seating is, is the next tier, uh, you know, uh, aspect to add. Uh, let's see. Both Dave. Let give Dave Zomek a shot. No. Thanks, Sarah. Can you help? can you all hear me? Yes. So no, this is this is great. Um, yeah, just a couple of quick comments. Um, you know, I, I I guess I just wanted to put it out there that you know, as staff, we all recognize you know the financial demands on on Amherst, but also you know our regional towns. So I just wanted to put that out there. We we realize that given everything that is being asked of all of us with capital projects, this is not an easy lift. Um, but having said that, I think we all believe it's a transformative project. I mean, this is a generational project. You know, not only have we been dealing with this track for years, and, and I just walked out there with my family, with my daughter and my, and my wife about 10 days ago, and, and I was struck yet again by just, um, what a poor resource it is. So it's a transformative project. I wanted to also emphasize that ADA is a huge component of what we're trying to do out there. Um, even if you, you could snap your fingers and put that track down and put a brand new track where it is today, um, there's all the associated ADA work that needs to happen. That track is not ADA. The, the, the bleachers are on the track for goodness sake. We need to get people down from the parking, which is up near the high school, in a, in a fully accessible way. You cannot invest this kind of money. We cannot invest this kind of money without making the entire facility ADA. Um, I would say this, and I'll be pretty frank, there's no sense doing either option A or option three, if you will, option two, without doing an eight lane track. I have talked to a number of the boosters. I have talked to a number of people who represent the track and field community, doing a six lane track in 2023, 24, whenever this would happen is, is a non-starter, I think. And I think we will lose a lot of support. I do not think we will, we will reach our, our fundraising goal with a six lane track. So it's an eight lane track or bust in my, in my opinion. Um, you know, in my, also, as I look at this, I'm not sure what we have to lose, frankly, a lot of this rests, yes, on the on the other towns, the other three towns, but perhaps more importantly, a lot of the pressure is on the boosters and the community to raise the money. So we have this January deadline. I'm in touch with some of the boosters, as 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 is Doug, um, and I think they're raring to go. And I think somebody brought up the point um, earlier. 
have they been waiting? And I think the, the, the short answer is yes, they've been waiting because really the gap is too large uh, without the CPA funding. But getting the CPA funding gets them what they think is within within um, within range of, of making the, 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 the leap here. They're very committed. In fact, there's a booster event tonight that I know they're going to talk about this project. The booster event tonight is not specifically about this project, but it will be it will be mentioned and raised. And I think this plan gives them a chance, gives the community a chance to raise the money. I guess I would ask us all, what do we really have to lose? Because the track isn't going to be, you know, if we if we say no, we're not going to give give the communities a chance to do this now. The track is still not going to be operational in 23. We we can't build it and open it for the track season in 23. So January, mid January seems reasonable. And frankly, I look at it as if the if the boosters and the community don't make it, then we've done our very best to to try to get us there. And the fallback is a wonderful new track for 1.5 million or or so. Um, but I, I think I think we owe it to the to the all four communities to to give everybody a shot to do this, and hopefully all of us will be part of that energy of raising that money to do it. So anyway, this plan gives us uh, a chance to to do something transformative. Thank you, Tim. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I'm assuming the scope of the project is very similar to the interior of the stands at the Amherst College field. That one I'm very familiar with, but interior, just so I have a sense, it's the track and interior is an artificial field and basically we aren't talking about much beyond the exterior of the track. Is that fair? Um. I mean, that's and the here. part that you're going to notice. Um, I think the, the, the reality is, is that there is, um, you know, a fair amount of, you know, earthwork that'll get done relative to the surroundings. Uh, you know, if, if you, as you look at the, the documents that I'll send along here in, in a little bit, um, you know, you'll see that the, some of the field events are exterior on the sort of north end of, of the track. That's a whole space. Uh, I think the ADA is a non-trivial but significant amount of, of work okay. on that brings it around. And then even where that softball field ultimately will go, there will be some preparatory work there as well so that the next project's got a smaller lift to get to it. Um, and then one other piece that's, again, sort of out of, out of sight, sort of out of mind is, is the, uh, the Tan Brook is culverted and runs underneath uh, a portion of that field. And so um, we'll have to do our due diligence and, and make sure that that's uh, managed properly and, and taken care of and, and uh, attended to in the right way. I don't know that it'll be necessarily a significant thing that we need to do there, but but it's one thing we'll keep an eye on. And, and if we had to do anything, no one would ever see the work, right? Because it's completely, you know, underground. Um, but nonetheless, we, we will, and I want to make sure to assure people that we will we'll do our, our due diligence and proper care around that as well. Okay. Because, yeah, I think I didn't see any in the cost estimates, I didn't see anything for the ADA and all that in there. Um, <clears throat> so I, don't I, just, think I, I think that that's an important component of the project, seems to me. And in terms of the marketing and the fundraising, it probably was very helpful in having that sort of stand out. So it's not just doing the like what Amherst College did, it's it's a very it's uh including some ADA, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's helpful. Okay. Sarah, if I could, if I could just add that yeah. the, bo the boosters are not shooting for 1.2. The goal of the boosters is really 2 million plus. So they are thinking, okay. they're thinking of contingencies. They're thinking of cost escalation. They're to be honest, my conversations have even included their consideration of an endowment for the track. So they're aiming very high. Again, kudos to them. Um, they have had organizing meetings on this. And again, who's to say whether they are going to succeed, but they're they're aiming very high and they, they don't just want to make it to a million dollars or 1.2. They would like to be much higher than that and make sure that those extras that are essential to the project um, happen. And I think we'll look at, we'll also look at the public sidewalk, which is on Mattoon Street. Um, 
which I believe is off the regional land as well. So that is part of the ADA access to, to this potential new facility. And then, sorry, while I have the four, one final question, I was a little surprised that the backup would be to spend one and a half million on a non-reoriented track. I thought that was inconsistent with the master plan for the whole fields. And I was surprised that that would be a backup. Um, it, it is in, I will say it is inconsistent with the master plan, but Doug can speak uh, from the, the school side, but I believe the school committee and the superintendent feel the necessity to get something done. Yeah. And that would be the fallback is to just get the, the track redone in the orientation that it currently is in. Yeah, I think it's it's no one's preferred option, but it is it, it is uh, the reality of, of where that track is, its current state of repair, which is poor uh, at best. And and the fact that we, we really, you know, can't host track meets. But it's also becoming, uh, you know, unsafe to to do PE classes and and uh, for kids to train for for track and and so it's it's really a, a pretty uh, uh, unfortunate circumstance where it, where it is at this point. We've waited just a little too long. Pandemic didn't do anybody any favors relative to this, or we've been having this conversation a couple of years ago, really, uh, and, and even that was a delayed conversation, I think, from what we'd all have preferred, um, you know. Uh, at the school committee meeting, when we were discussing the the debt authorization, you know, the student representative uh, at the time, you know, spoke of a, an injury she had sustained on that track a full year or two before the conversation we were having. So, you know, there's a, there's a need there to do something fairly soon. Um, and and you know, I don't want to overemphasize the urgency, but at the same time, recognize that it's real. Okay. Andrew. Thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, yeah, and I just wanted to add, I know we mentioned this, I think the first go around, but you know, we talk about this as the track project, but as option three, that artificial turf will have um, a lot of important value to all of the outdoor sports. So I coach the uh, the girls across team at the high school. We've had four, four games that have been postponed because of field conditions. And to be able to have a consistent field with which is lit would allow us to run you know, that would, that would impact, you know, six to eight sports in the spring, probably another four or so in the fall. Um, it, it impacts all of athletics. Um, so I just reminder, we shouldn't think of this as just getting track back on board, but adding that level of consistency um, for all of the outdoor sports. Thanks. I want to, thank you. Um, I just want to see if there are any more questions specifically for Doug, because when when he's answered all our questions, we'll just talk amongst ourselves. We'll we'll talk about what we've heard, and we don't need to keep him here for that. So, um, does anyone have any questions for Doug? Looks like the answer is no. Obviously, you're welcome to <laughs> spend the rest of the evening with us, um, but uh, no need to. We thank you for your presentation. And, well, and for making the effort to get this uh, updated information into the school committee for, for working on this plan. Yeah, I appreciate your, your time tonight. And I thank you for letting us come before you and to entertain the, uh, the idea of this. And you know, hopefully we'll find a way to get there from here. And, and uh, I, may, I may stay on, I'll cut my camera off, but just to listen to your discussion, just to hear it, because it may be helpful to me as I go to talk to these other four communities and the kind of things that people are gonna <laughs> ask. And so, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll probably listen in and, and, and if you think of something in the next few days, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Okay, thank you. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think now our task is clear. We've been, we've been presented with this revised request and we are um, going to have a vote hopefully tonight, but if, if not, then next week. Um, but I think there is some, urgency in, in um, resolving uh, the matter this month because so many of us are going off the committee that, and everybody needs an answer. <laughs> I'm, I don't understand the council. I don't know the council's calendar. That's not really, I mean, someone will tell us if we need to know. So Sam, what would- A uh, couple things. Uh, I'm wondering if Sean or if uh, Doug is still listening, if the costs, can be emailed to the committee members. 
so that we can actually look at it separate from what was on the screen. Um, yeah, we can nice post the, we can have the, I believe the Wesson Samson report is finalized now, Dave, right? To where we could, um, we could post that information um, either on the school website. So we, we will Or just uh, that post summary that. that was presented to us in case as we're talking. Yeah, it. yeah no, absolutely. We can do that. Do you mean you want it emailed to you in the next minute so you can look at it I, while we're talking? I or? think it would be a helpful piece of information for people to have as we're talking about it. Given, or we can just leave it. Given if that Sean it's has it, we just leave it on the screen. That's Sean, Sean I, sorry, to, sorry to jump in. Uh, Sean, I just emailed you and Sonia that 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 memo from, from Weston and Samson. Okay. And you have no issue, Doug, with that going out to the committee, right? Nope. Okay. I will forward that to the committee as we speak. It's already been made public, that page. <laughs> I have a follow-up to Andy's comment uh, <clears throat> regarding the impact to the school. I've got two kids in school. Uh, I coached the kids who were the senior soccer team this year I played on the field and you know having grown up in town as Dave and others uh, very uh, involved with athletics and I am on the board of directors of the Amherst Youth Soccer Association where they currently play at Plum Plumbrook uh, and I'd like to reiterate that it's not just the track uh, that the capacity of having a field uh, a turf field or even reorienting and giving the option for the future for a turf field is huge. Uh, I heard Andy's comments about the teams having to miss games uh, and that's hard to hear. Uh, I understand the importance for kids in high school for being on sports teams having done it and having played on that exact field. Uh, it really is significant and it's not just the athletes if you go to watch any of the games the whole school shows and it's not just the school it's the community everybody is involved it really is significant and um you know andy's comment about the teams not being able to play at home resonated with me because that's their chance these are the seniors uh, and so in the future down the road dave's indicating this is generational opportunity meaning take it or don't uh you know it really is. And, you know, when Dave started this project, I don't know, what was it, five years ago, Dave, maybe, um, started gathering information through the whole process. I mean, it was, there was a lot of involvement. So um, I underscore, uh, based on my own experience and awareness, what Andy has said about this being more than just a track. Kim, you're muted. You need to unmute. Sorry, I just heard that the attachment was set and I was trying to print it. <laughs> sorry about oh, that. Oh, oh, well, your hands up. Do you mean your? Okay, your I hands know, up? I know. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I would like to. I think we need a discussion as to what actually this committee is going to be funding. We were told earlier, and frankly, I don't recall why is the artificial turf field not eligible. And if that's true, what a component of the project are we talking about um, that this committee would approve funds for? So I think we need to understand that. Sean, <laughs> popped his hand right up. There. Yeah, so um, so <laughs> it's not eligible because categorically it's not eligible. There's a ruling from the CPA um, <laughs> coalition and others that track is not, uh, turf, artificial turf is not an yes. eligible use for CPA. So it's just, it's. That's the rule. We can't it's do it. In the technically, yeah. like, what about the undersurface and all right. that stuff? Is that so? I, I think the way we thought about the CPA portion is that, um, you know, it's not ex one for one, but that more or less the CPA portion would go towards the track. Um, I understand. Okay. Because walking tracks are eligible for CPA um, funds. So I think, again, it's not going to, in reality, it may not be one for one like that, but um, I think that's what I would suggest is that we identify the track portion as being the CPA portion. I see. Dave, you have something to add to that? Yeah, just a quick update. Um, if I'm not mistaken, what happened is when communities began to sign on to the CPA um, across the Commonwealth, communities immediately started to fund uh, track, or excuse me, uh, turf fields with CPA. And it got a little bit, frankly, out of control. So they changed the legislation and it it clamped down, as Sean said, you can no longer use CPA dollars for 
for the turf field, but you can use it for all the other pieces. So essentially we would bring, you know, these different funding sources together and, and basically it would be up to Sean and Doug to not use, see if you choose, if the, you and the town council recommend and, and, and authorize this funding to not use that funding for the, the field itself. But there's, as you look at the budget, there's lots of other associated costs with this. So it could go toward the track, toward earthwork, but it just can't pay for the nuts and bolts of the synthetic field. And Sonia would never let us. So I think you can all, <laughs> right. you, you can all you. rest assured that she will not let us uh, violate that. So. Sarah. Are we prepared or ready or have, has the town staff prepared the revised CPA budget allocation so we could look at how this project fits into our overall budget and um, allocations so, going forward? Yeah, so I think what we prepared is in the pack, since this is being proposed as a debt authorization, um, what you'll see in the packet is the estimated debt from this project and what it does to the um, the debt, the the ongoing debt that comes out of CPA each year. It's the very last page, I believe. Okay. Do are we, we, will we look at that as a group, or are we not ready to do that? Uh, or we too. Certain. If somebody can share it, I don't. Yeah, I'm happy to. Yeah, I'm happy to. I would. It. Sorry. Yeah. Why don't we do that right now? Well, while we're picking that up, so technically we are approving funds to handle the debt. No. You are off. Um, you're recommending the project is what you're doing um, to be funded from debt. I know. So how do we get? Finance. So how does that relate to the eight hundred thousand dollar request? Basically, you're just approving that um, you will pay the debt in future years for this project, okay. so you're approving the project. You won't see any, this hit our budget until debt service actually shows up. And it'll be part of that debt service that we actually appropriate, that we actually will be paying that year. Okay. So you really don't see anything in the budget this year and probably not next year, probably. We put it on our year. credit card. We put it on our yeah. credit card. We don't <laughs> yeah. mortgage, pay for mortgage payment will not come due for a couple of years. I think that's a useful way to think about okay. it. All right. Um, was somebody going to share that? I was going I to, thought, but I think I grabbed it. It looked like it was, see. we were almost there. I had minutes. That's Oh, there it is. Okay. I got it. So these, um, yeah. um, you'll see what's already authorized. Um, so these ones at the top here already have been bonded. And so these debt schedules are fixed um, for these six projects. One of them is come, uh, being paid off completely in FY22. Then we have a, number, a couple projects that are being funded with bond anticipation notes and will uh, either be paid off that way or be eventually converted to a bond. Um, and then there are some that have been approved by CPA that we haven't quite started making payments on yet. Um, Jones Library Special Collections. That one, we didn't have an estimate yet because it's uh, the project is still a ways away, but um, we can get you an estimate for what that will be. Uh, Valley CDC, we will start paying next year. Um, and yeah. you can see our estimate for that. And then the high school track, so the project that's being proposed tonight, um, an authorization for about 800,000 would translate to um, these estimates in the first few years. And it, this would be a declining debt schedule. So the maximum would be in year one, and then it would reduce each year after that. Is it's that? So really the, 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 the difficult year would be FY24 um, because you'd have this sort of this new debt coming on and this peak. And then there's a, um, there's a large project that gets paid off in that year. Groff Park comes off, so it drops down for FY25. And then Rolling gets paid off in FY25 and it'll drop off again in FY26. So, so there'd be a couple of years where your debt might be higher than it's been, uh, you know, a little bit higher than where it's been, but it would catch up pretty quickly when those other projects are paid off. And our typical CPA budget is a little bit over a million. Is that right? Like one? Yeah, it's been a little bit higher than that the last one couple two, of years, right, Sonia? Yeah. Yeah, and we have that. If we don't spend any of that budgeted reserve that we just um, appropriated, then that falls back too, so it becomes part of the budget. Plus, 
I don't know if you heard me at the beginning. We had one of the projects returned. Yeah, two hundred thousand dollars. I heard right. Yeah. Okay. Our, to our total 23 FY23 um, requ requests was $2.9 million. So in including the debt service, that would, that's what we already, Dave, you're going to unmute it again. <laughs> um, it's difficult. So, so we, there would, should still, we would still be able to, fund some projects with cash, right? Um, but there would be there would be a tough year or two, especially when the the library borrowing comes on right at that peak. But but it looks like most of the borrowing is just falling off in about three years. So that's going to be great. <laughs> Tim. Yeah, I just had a uh, suggestion in terms of what we are approving. I have some difficulty approving just the high school track. I would like the language to be more like the high school track and or other site improvements or something like that. So that the ADA stuff and the, sorry, other than the artificial turf, I just would feel more comfortable in approving funds for that purpose rather than just for the track. And I'm not quite sure how to word it, but that would be a suggestion. Well, I, th I think we were told that um, we're being asked to contribute $800,000 towards option three. Right. Okay. All right, specifically. <laughs> um, and if there's some, you know, it's improvements to the track and field. Okay. A, you know, infrastructure, but we don't, I mean, Sonia and team will, will know exactly what can be paid for and what can't be paid for. But if we say it's to, it's contributed towards a funding option project option three, and they don't raise the money, then they don't get the CBA funds. Okay. Right. So we don't have to be overly prescriptive. Right. We would just res think. rescind the debt authorization and not borrow. So right. we just go okay. away. No, I was just more concerned about like from the newspaper to other things. What did the CPA just approve? And it did not approve funds just for the high school track. It approved it for the overall project, which is option three. <laughs> And just so the language, and when you have like a spreadsheet and Sean's spreadsheet said high school track, and that's misleading. So I would suggest that we are careful in the wording we use as to what we're proving. That was my sort of editorial, okay. if you will. So track and fields improvements. That would be much more acceptable to me. Thank you. Um, Andrew. I, I was just going to echo or agree with Tim. I think that's a really good suggestion for optics uh, to tweak the name on that. Uh, Katie? Um, yeah, Sean, you mentioned that um, the library is a few a few years out. And I just, um, that, I think it's FY24 where it's 500,000. Um, do you think it could start then? Because it would probably be, the debt service might be 150. Yeah, so the um, so the estimate for the library, so this the earliest the library debt would start would be FY24. Um, it okay. could be later than that. So that could be a tight year. No, it, that will be the tight year um, if, if it does start. Um, so the estimate for library debt, hold on, I've got it here. Um, in the first year, it would be about 115,000. Um, yeah. So, and then it would, it would stay around that level um, and trickle down a little bit, but um, so yeah, you, you potentially could be another 115,000 on top of that, 120,000 on top of that FY24 number, if it starts in FY24. It's very possible it might be one year later, um, which would line up better with um, some of the other uh, debt obligations dropping off. So um, Sean, yeah. that could possibly change too if, if it's part of the overall borrowing authorization for the library. Wouldn't that be over um, more years? 
Um, because I think we've had that before. Where you mean borrowing a, over more than 10 years? Part of a, a part of the main bond, it might have might go over more years and less debt. So. Yeah, I think we we still have options in terms of right. how long we structure it over. Right. Um, so okay. it, so the number could change a little bit. Um, Sam. Uh, following up on Tin's comment, I like the fact that it's referencing the larger project. Uh, option three, it might be in our interest to put a comma there and say, uh, not uh, not for the purchase of artificial turf as uh, it, and in compliance with CPA regulations or something along those lines. In other words, we're going with option three, exclusive of the purchase of the turf. I think you can just say for the eligible CPA costs of option three, yeah, it's a and, that would, way and that would it. give us you know, the latitude <laughs> that, we need. Yeah, Much this happens in other projects. We don't. Yeah, that that's a wonderful way. No, we we it. pay for what we pay for what we're allowed to pay for. <laughs> but I, but in terms of the optics of it, I think that that uh, taking Tim's comment and also saying for the eligible CPA items would be there'd be no harm in saying that. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I have a question for Sean. Um, and Sonia, uh, the the 10-year funding, uh, I saw the interest rate at 5%. I'm like, well, that's, that adds an extra couple hundred grand over the course of the 10 years. Is there, um, I'm wondering what your thought process is in selecting a 10-year uh, bond time frame as opposed to any other alternatives. Yeah, I mean, 10 years. So I think two things, the 5%, yeah, that's higher than where we've been, um, but interest rates are headed that way, unfortunately. So we're, you know, I think our conservative estimate before was around three and that was conservative a year ago. And now it's, you know, it's no longer there. So um, so 5% is sort of back to where our, our old conservative number was. Um, in terms of 10 years, I mean, we could go a little bit longer, you know, you balance paying more interest costs if you, if you extend it out longer. Um, and you also got to be mindful of the life of the asset because you can't borrow for longer than the life of um, whatever it is. Now, a track should be good for more than 10 years. So um, you theoretically could stretch it out more, but um, we like to pay off debt as fast as we can. Let's put it that way. I think we, if we can pay it off quicker, we want to. But not shorter than 10 years. Um, we sometimes go shorter than 10 years, but I think when it's a larger project like this, then we, okay. you know, 10 years is sort of our minimum. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, but, up to, but, it's not up to us anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we again, we could we could do it over five years. It would take a bigger bite out of your, um, you know, the annual amount that you have available. Okay. So we have not heard from a couple people, Dave and Hetty, and I just want to make sure you have a chance to say anything you want to. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I was just curious to know what would be legitimate CPA funded eligible pieces of this project, like not just to just to ask the sort of most obvious question, you know, if it's not the actual artificial track, um, what what could it be for just as a for instance? It is for the track. Yeah, it can be for not the, track. the turf, not, not the, the turf. not the fake grass in the middle. Gotcha. Not the field. Thanks, Sarah. And and it could not be used for permanent seating, but they haven't even proposed that. So as far as I can tell, the only thing in that cost list that is not eligible is the installation of the turf field, the artificial turf field. <laughs> all the design work would be covered, uh, all the preparation, uh, et cetera. There's a lot in that list. Well, out of four point seven million dollars or whatever it is, I think it easily can accommodate a hundred or even nine hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars. So I, I don't think there's a problem there. And and one more sort of more procedural question. So, given that the funding is sort of elastic, from what I can barely understand of the sort of finance end of all of this, um, just sort of envisioning the actual project, would the project be phased in any way that would um, help uh, funding, you know, the, all of the components of funding, or does it have to all sort of come together at one point? Um, that's my question. Yeah. John can tell you, yeah. I mean, it'll, um, and Dave, you can hop on and add. Um, so 
I don't know if you can phase this. It's it's sort of a, it's a project. It's sort of contained in a way that you know you're going to do it all together. Um, yeah. I think you know Doug, hop on if you're still there, and and if I say anything incorrectly, but even if this is approved and we get the funding by the January timeline, um, you know, this is probably not a project. It's not a project that's gonna be ready next summer. It's probably the year after next summer. So it's still a ways away in terms of um, when this project will be complete and ready to go. Um, is that your understanding too, Doug? We're looking at summer of 24 that this might be ready sometime in there? Yeah, I think, you know, in, a, in, a, in, in talking both with, with the, uh, folks at Weston and Sampson as well as just kind of the general understanding of the timelines for things that, you know, it would be uh, nice to start design next summer, uh, but actual construction would probably start. Um, I mean, in a perfect world, it would be, you know, some preliminary work in the fall of next year, but I think that's really optimistic. Um, it's more likely it'd be probably the spring and summer of, of 24 where the actual construction occurs. Can I can I play devil's advocate for a minute? So presumably between now and when this project comes to fruition, there have to be contingency plans for the people who want to be able to access athletic facilities, mm -hmm. high school and whoever else they are working with. Um, can you imagine someone coming along and saying, oh, well, you've managed, you know, all these years in this with this contingency plan? Why would we um vote all this money for for something else you know given that there are you know and and i'm being really you know devil's advocate for for the purposes of just this question um because clearly you know people are both not being able to access the things that they've signed up to do so far and also it's going to keep going for a while by the sounds of it by the timeline yeah Doug, I can go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Dave. Yeah. So no, I think I think it's a great question, Hetty, and and I would jump back to something Andrew said a few minutes ago, which is, I I think we've only heard we in staff and you as a as a volunteer committee have only heard from a very small percentage of very frustrated residents of all four towns and athletes. But they're out there and we've we've gotten letters through the years. I mean, this is really kind of a 10 year effort to do this project. And I think Andrew's comments reminded me because I've been in this this uh, project for so long that it's more than the track. It is that field. It is that multipurpose field that will serve young men, young women and all of those sports teams including baseball, even though it's not a baseball diamond, baseball can't get out on fields early because they're too wet. So it's it's lacrosse, it's field hockey, it's soccer, it's ultimate. Every every sport will take advantage of that multi-purpose field. And, and those athletes are, are raring to go. I think the key is if we have a plan and we can reach the financial goals, I I hope and I'm 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 trusting the community that. Um, if we have a plan and we reach our fundraising goals as, a, as, as the four communities, that they will have the patience to say there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If, if um, and, I, and I, I trust that will be true. And again, if, if the community doesn't reach the goal, then the fallback is to do the track. And, and I think there will be frustration, but um, so be it. Um, just on the phasing question too, Hedy, you had a great question there, which, which I think occurs to all of us. Um, a big part of a project like this is mobilization. You want, once a contractor mobilizes, you want to go because mobilization is a huge cost of a, this is an earth moving project um, deep down and, and fundamentally this is moving earth, contouring earth, and then building on that, that site. So once they mobilize, you want to go and you want to just, you want to get through the whole project. So it would be, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to remobilize for one phase or another. So that's very and helpful. I, Thank you. That helps. And I'll just quickly add, we've been losing a lot of economic activity in town as well, just because not being able to hold the tournaments. There's just a couple large tournaments we hold every year. At least one of them I know has had to be moved to McDuffie and Granby. Um, I'm sure Cindy's drive-in out there loves it. They probably get tons of, uh, you know, walkovers yeah. when, yeah. when the 
ultimate invitational is going on um but that used to be held here and it was you know brought a ton ton of people into the town um and so getting back to that as soon as we can i think it's, it's good for the whole the whole town i think also that it's it's such a wonderful resource if you include the pool the the mm -hmm. memorial pool and the fact that it's near other walking areas of town. Um, you know, I use it. I and I, you know, I, I I think if there was a way to have it feel like you know people can walk there, you know, as well as run there or whatever it is they're doing, you know, for sports, you know, all all the better, you know, for it to be seen as that kind of thing. You know, I often see people just just walking, you know, just, yeah. or doing sprints, you know, and they're clearly not associated with the high school necessarily. They're just there for, because it's a really nice place to be and you're really, really close to town. And just to remind everybody, this is part, you know, this was phase one of a, a multi-phase plan, uh, which included, like you just described, walking trails that would go through the middle school and through the, the high school yeah. area yeah. and make a nice walking circuit. Um, and then you also mentioned War Memorial, that would be sort of the next, you know, it's a phase I know Dave's already been working on is then how do you transform War Memorial? Um, and, and then you've got a really nice center of activity for everybody to use. I still want to have that um, uh, court for the game with the Pickleball. Pickleball. Thank you. I still, th I'm still voting for that. <laughs> Dave would, Dave would be happy to sit and talk with you after this about, <laughs> about the loca Thank location. Uh, for the town council already voted that funding, so we're Thank working you. on pickleball. But, but, way, but where? I think Hetty's saying she'd really love it if it were. Yeah, I want it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, want it, you want it in central town, in, in, yeah, in, not up in Mill River. Well, we're working on that. I, mean, I, love, Mill, I love Mill River, and I totally get it that it would be there too, but. Um, <laughs> Well, someday we'll we'll have pickleball at all, oh, all three parts. There's Dave, a lot of Dave Williams, for that Mill River place. <laughs> I want to ask Dave Williams if you want to say anything about or. Uh, the first thing I want to say is, um, I have been listening to the entire conversation. I don't know why my computer is behaving the way it is. I don't want you to think that I am ignoring what is happening and very interesting conversation. And I guess um, there was one question raised by uh, Tim and I believe that uh, David Zomek uh, responded, but um, I guess last, it may have been last year in a discussion and uh, David, um, Zomek talked about the track and field being a part of the revitalization of the town of Amherst. And our focus should not be just that we are looking at athletics for Amherst High School or the junior high school or what have you. Um, given what we have done or we are doing in uh, the town's common. All of these things are connected and the field, the um, track and field would also be a part of that to enhance our town. And so the challenge now is uh, our funding. So I, I have listened very carefully. I support the direction that we're headed, but unfortunately my computer uh, has decided that it didn't want to be bothered with any of you <laughs> and included me. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. We, we, know you're, we know you're out there. Computers, are, <laughs> computers have minds of their own. Um, Definitely so. Yeah, okay. So Dave? Yeah, just I wanted to thank David for that comment and, and it was a good reminder, but you know, people know how enthusiastic I am about all things Amherst and, and these projects really get me excited, but just 
I, I, David, your comments were very poignant because, you know, here, you know, a couple of years ago, we were saying, wow, what's a playground going to do at Kendrick Park? And there were, frankly, we all were like, well, you know, I don't know. Is it going to be a good thing? Well, every day when you go by that playground at Kendrick Park, it is used dawn to dusk. And people are out there gathering. It's a family gathering place. It's good, as Sean mentioned, for economic development. Likewise, Groff Park. I mean, Groff Park, that project frankly, almost killed me. Um, <laughs> it took so long and, and staff were amazing and DPW, our town engineer was amazing on that. But I went down there the other day and lo and behold, um, I couldn't drive down the parking lot because it was so full on one of those hot days. But it's transformative for South Amherst and for the people who live on um, East Hadley Road and everybody who uses that park. And again, I think Dave Williams had and mentioned here that this is going to be part of, you know, what we do. Kendrick Park is only a couple of blocks away. We want to revitalize around War Memorial Pool. War Memorial Pool itself is a is a magnet for a lot of families and and folks who um, who maybe can't get away during the summer or can't afford to go somewhere um, like the Cape or Maine or whatever. So it's and it's critical for our our camps through Amherst Recreation. So. I just think, yeah, the investment we're going to make is a generational investment. And again, um, if we if we can make it toward the fundraising goal, great. If we can't, then um, I, I think we fall back to a project that will be good. It won't be super, but we'll we'll give it our best shot. So, thank you, David, for those comments about the broader community. Sarah. Thanks. I would like the record to reflect that, Dave, the parents of people who spend hours and hours at Kendrick Park would really just love a coffee cart. <laughs> that's, that's my next, that's my request. Every time we would, people would like a, something to drink. But that's part of the economic development. I know, I know. If someone- would partake of all the coffee shops in downtown- We need Amherst. another food. We need a coffee cart. cart. We need a mobile coffee truck car. or mobile. It yeah, could be done. Well, I think I think we're ready to vote. Um. So I don't know if Sonia's kind of fill in one more column in that spreadsheet, or we're just going to kind of wing it without the the spreadsheet. Um, you're muted, so I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I can just make. I would wing it without the spreadsheet because okay, that would be all right. All right, then I'm going to move that we approve the regional school's request for eight hundred thousand dollars um, to be uh, contributed towards funding of option three for track and fields improvements, including accessibility improvements. Is there a second? Second. Kim, all right. Second. Got it, yes. Um, was that clear enough? Was that mm -hmm. anybody? Okay, Sam, you have your hand up. Uh, I you know, tried to make it clear through the years that I'm an advocate of uh, this project that Dave uh, has uh, championed and I, Aside from the CPA, I really hope that the town and the school committee and Doug and everyone in the boosters are successful in achieving their goals. I would not want to see the town revert to option one because I recognize um, the, the benefit, value, transformative nature and uh, in many different ways of reaching uh, option three. And the key is the reorientation. Once it's reoriented, things will fall into place. Um, <clears throat> having said that, and having heard the presentations of the uncertainties of funding, uh, I wonder if we wanna increase the $800,000 to a different amount. Uh, and if we could, even if it were just $50,000 to give an indication, that's my thoughts. That's my, my mindset. 
I would say that a very generous impulse um, that but that <laughs> I, I wouldn't I don't agree with that. I would note that eight hundred thousand dollars is is several tens of thousands of dollars in excess of what their current estimated the the CPA cost to Amherst is if I remember that 7, from that table it was like seven thousand extra. I thought it was. That's, I thought I saw eight ninety three seven ninety three. So it was seven eighty four, which was exclusive of the one hundred and fifty already committed. That was the number that was given to us. Seven eighty four is the nine forty one four less the one fifty seven five. So okay, I don't 16, have this yeah. oh, okay. okay. And, and just so, if, if I may, the regional schools could always come back. Um, again, if there's a reserve in place next year um, and there was a shortage of funding or um, they theoretically could come back again if they, if they wanted to. I, I, I think it would be best. I think it would be better to, to let that happen because they might mean need another 20 grand to add the two lanes, you know, or whatever. There might be, there might, they might be almost, but not quite there. So I just, I just like the thought of the committee spurring other communities and other sources. Oh, uh, it might, ba it might backfire, Sam. <laughs> I would say we should all just support the fundraising as best we can. Any other comments on the motion? <clears throat> Are we then ready to vote. I think so. So this will be a roll call vote. So Sam. Uh, I'm a yes. Katie. Yes. Tim. Yes. Hetty. Yes. Andrew. Aye. Dave. Yes. Sarah. Yes. And I am a yes. So it is unanimous. One, two, three, That's four, awesome. five, six, seven, eight. Eight to zero. That's um, great. Yes, that is great. So wonderful. Um, I, I suppose that means there will be a very brief special report to council. I doubt we don't need to have any further meetings about it. I think it'll be very easily accomplished, right? We have to send it on to council and they'll act on it. When, when it works, makes we, sense for them. We can update you on their timeline once, um, once we know exactly how they'll slot it. They'll, they'll have to do a hearing and things like that, um, like right. they do for the other CPA recommendations. So we'll let you know as soon as we know. All right, well, some, someone else might have to present it. So they want someone in person. We'll make sure we get it done in time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right. Okay, well, Doug looks very happy, so. <laughs> I really appreciate so, it so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank, thank you. you all. Good thank night. you all for yes, for coming. And um, this what a wonderful way to end the year. And thank you again to all the people who are going off the committee. Who's um, going off, Sarah? Um, said Sarah Eisinger, thank you so much for your service. Sarah thank Eisinger. You. Loved it. Yes. yes. We're gonna miss you. Thank and you. I loved it. And uh, Hetty, you said you're going to, so you, that's still the plan? The plan is for Robin to come back on. Yes. Back um, on. The, what I officially am saying is that I've kept the seat warm for her. We just had dinner together here. She was actually on the call for a oh. um, little while. Um, and um, we just need to put it to a vote with the historical commission members. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just some, what's it called? Um, you know, in in-house business that needs to happen. So Robin will be back with you in the fall. Well, thank you so much for for. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I've learned a lot, and I I love this group. It's it's taking care of the heart of the of the town, as far as I'm concerned. You know, mm, that's so. kind. And Anna obviously already stepped off, and we're waiting. We yeah. CONCOM has made its choice, but that has yet to make it through council. So there's no one that's been appointed yet. And I am rotating off, so. No. Yeah. What? You are? I wow. Am. I'm done. Wow, Sarah, that's big <laughs> news. You could re-up at large, Sarah. <laughs>
Uh, well, yes, Please. I could, but but I think time for some fresh faces, right? Wow. So, so it is, but it has been hugely enjoyable. It really has. This is the best committee. We get to give money away and make people happy. I think it's <laughs> Wow. Um, it's excellent. So, um, yeah, so Sarah Isinger, she's an at-large member. So you all can encourage folks to apply to be an at-large member. Otherwise, um, you know, the, the boards and commissions will send their own delegates. So, all right. Thank yeah. you so much, Sarah Marshall. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, thank thank you. You. Good good night. Night. All right. meeting is adjourned. Good night. Night. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Well, Bye. Thank you, Sarah and Sarah. Thank you, and Sonia and Sean. Thank you, absolutely. Everybody. Good night.